Use the yellow thread just to brighten the head up slightly. You could use chartreuse, so just do the use all of itself. But I quite like the yellow. Now I'm gonna tie it in a kind of short style. I'll show you what I mean by instead of normally you would take the thread down the shank to in line with the bar bit at, down at this point here. But I'm gonna stop short and stop just at the point and then remove the waist piece. Now I've got some light olive cock hackle here, which I'm going to use for the tail. Let's bring it 90 degrees from the stem, and this will line it up. Fill it in, just have a look. Now, the length of the tail should be the length of the body, or the shank, the area where you're going to be tying, sorry. Which I'll have over the back. Just a couple of turns to hold it. You can see how it's sitting. Now I'm going to use this as to help build the fly up. So I don't trim it right down at this area here because you want to, well you don't want any steps or lumps or bumps or anything like. But when I wound the tail and I tie the tail on, I actually turn the thread like two turns down. Now I'm going to start tying the way back up now. I'm going to catch in a small gold wire, the full length of the body. Now I've got some this is bleached and dyed pheasant tail, exact same colour, nice olive. Just pull a few fibres off, just bring them 90 degrees from the stem and the tips will line up for you. Once I've lined up, tear it off. All I do is come in very close with the roots of the pheasant tail and do a single turn and slowly pull this through close to the tips as you can go. If you do this, you'll end up with a nice taper on the body. I carry on the way up and stop two thirds of the way up. And now, the hero, in this case, pheasant tail fibre, wind it the opposite way you wind your thread and your rib. It's the weakest fibre, it needs to be protected, so I would wind it the opposite way. Now, once you've got your body, just come up, bring your thread. Now, I'd, what I usually do is bring a thread turn across the pheasant tail and do single one on top. That locks that turn in, stops it pulling back and carry on. Now you can trim this away. The wire's going to hold the pheasant tail. Then I do a single turn at the back and rub up through with the wire. Reasonably close, don't be too far away. And then again up with the thread and the wire, put that 90 degree bend in and then tie it down all the way to the eye and come back up bend and break off the wire, it's much easier to do that than using your scissors now for the thorax you could use a dubbin or you could use, in this case I'm going to be using, this is dyed yellow believe it or not, but when you dye it yellow peacock curl, actually it's a nice colour works out really well. So I'm going to pull off about three strands of peacock herald. Come up, tie it on the side. Pull it in. Now I'm tying it in by the tips. I've lined up the tips. Just pull it in. Tighten up. Now you can wind this over some varnish or what I'm going to do, I'm going to wind it the opposite way build up the thorax get down towards the eye and come back up two or three turns and take it right to the eye itself then take a thread across like I did with the pheasant tail and lock one in so it's a turn across and then come down over the top just run your thread through the peacock here, you've got to do that, this will protect it and tie off. Don't worry about some of the yellow showing through, you'll not, you'll really not see it too much. Now once it's on top, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some jungle cock on his wing buds. Now the wing buds are quite easy. I've got a split jungle cock eyes here, or an eye. 
see it's split right down the middle. We tie this on the top and then basically just lie the pheasant tail, uh, sorry, the jungle cock on the top flat and then bring your finger and thumb down and pull down the split jungle cock each side. And then a loose wrapper to turn the thread. Bring it on top, if it's going to move. Now you see it's sitting like a V just now. All you have to do is keep the thread tight, push these towards the eye, and you'll see that they sit flat, just like small wing buds. Ideal. Now, two or three more turns to block it in. Fold back the jungle cock. Come over. Trim away the waist. So watch what you're doing. Don't trim away the jungle cock. And as you can see, they really do look like small wing buds. You could use goose bite if you haven't got any jungle cock. Now, from the same cape, it's a Chinese cock cape I'm using. I'm going to use one of the feathers, main feathers. It's a kind of quite a soft cape. The, the Chinese is like a hairy cock. Now, we tie the stem, we tie it in by bottom of the hackle with the front of the hackle facing myself. Just run your thread down, pull back the stem. Nice and tight. I want, don't worry about the head size too much on this. When, if, when the nymph's hatching, it does have a very, quite a thick head, quite a heavy head. Turn away the waist. And then, really you only need probably a turn, maybe two, depending on how good the hackle is. Now there's a, so one turn and a half or so, that's plenty. Bring it across your thread. Take the thread down, pull back the point of the hackle come back up. Just keep your thread tight just now, don't let it go and come straight in and let it finish. Nice and tight. Trim away the waist, trim away your hackle. Then to make it more fishy looking to my to me, I just flatten the, the hackle slightly. See how it's sitting. Don't want you to cover up the jungle cock too much. But there you are. And that there is your olive cruncher with the ring buds of jungle cock. All we've got to do now, a couple of coats of varnish. All the way around. And there you are. And that's your olive cruncher. Mm -hmm.